Well, it's always a pleasure to be with Patricia Olinger, the Executive Director of GBAC. Hello, Patty. How are you today? Hi, Jeff. I'm doing really well. Good to hear. Uh, today, we're going to talk about something that you've done several times, and that's writing articles. In the latest issue of ISSA Today, Inside, there's an article that you wrote recently about the pandemic, and everyone can see this online, ISSA.com. Go to the media section. I want to talk about this article because you wrote about facing the pandemic, but this is not the first article about the pandemic you've written. Tell us about what happened about a year ago. <laughs> well, about a year ago, you asked me to write you know, an article about GBAC and what we do. And I wrote an article that basically was a pandemic is coming and we're not prepared. Um, the underlying, I guess, uh, theme to it. And it, uh, it was published in January of 2020. And, you know, uh, history shows itself that we then had the pandemic hit. And, um, uh, you know, we've had to pivot many, many times since then. Uh, we really weren't prepared. And, and it's interesting because historically, uh, you know, countries, United States, think about it. We have spent millions and billions of dollars on preparedness, um, emergency preparedness and response. And it really has focused in some of our areas of healthcare, uh, some of our areas of um, emergency preparedness when we think about disasters. And what we were missing is some of those elements of that what I have talked about is that frontline preparedness and response. Those of us who are going to be out on the front lines, um, cleaning staff, um, you know, emergency preparedness and response individuals are, are um, fire and, and life safety folks. And we, we really haven't focused on teaching how you do infection prevention and control and how we properly clean and disinfect in this, what we would call a scalable model, going from routine cleaning to full pandemic response, because there are really a scalable response to do that. And it really was what GBAC was really put in place um, to do. And, uh, you know, the history uh, tells itself and we've pivoted so many times this year to very quickly respond to the needs of our people. Yes, it's amazing. Um, thinking back, now we've come a long way in a year with GBAC and the, the GBAC STAR programs, but uh, thinking back a year when you wrote that first article about preparing for the pandemic, did you have any idea? Was there anything on your radar about what could happen? You know, um, if you go back to 2014, I was involved with the Ebola outbreak. I was at Emory University at the time where we treated, um, where we cared for the four Ebola patients and my team provided direct support to that clinical team. Um, a year before that, I had spent um, several weeks and a couple weeks uh, in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and looking at different clinical uh, settings. And interestingly, during all that time, it was like, you know, again, spending lots of money, many countries spend lots of money in providing support, but what we weren't really doing is what doing that risk assessment and what is really needed in the event that there is a pandemic or an outbreak. It's all about high, you know, um, bio, biosecurity type stuff. And when we looked at that, and we, you know, in fact, I, in, in one conversation I remember having, I, I uh, uh, stated, you know, if we ever have an Ebola outbreak and we look at some of the work practices and how people are dealing with it, we are going to have a problem. And, you know, sure enough, I mean, we really weren't focusing on the actual needs of preparedness um, people think, oh, it's just taking on personal protective equipment. Why is that important? Well, we found that, you know, that very systematic fundamental aspect of taking on and putting off uh, or putting on and taking off personal protective equipment was critical to the health and safety of, of our healthcare providers or responders. Um, when we started doing pandemic preparedness activities, even in our healthcare, we actually did a, a drill um, for a novel coronavirus and found that the needs 
for response being an airborne pathogen was gonna be completely different than something like Ebola, which was not an airborne pathogen. Um, in a lot of respects, it's easier to contain. And so um, in, in looking at all those things, in how we prepare our public and knowing that if we have an epidemic or pandemic, it's going to come down to our behaviors, you know, how we wear masks or not wear masks, um, how we clean, sanitize, disinfect, and those infection prevention measures, um, both as response personnel and our day-to-day -day lives is gonna be critical. And it's, it's those things that we've known for years and that many of us have talked about, but it, it just didn't get on a lot of people's radars because it's like that only happens in the movies. Sure, sure. Uh, one thing in this article, which is excellent, by the way, and anyone that wants to read it, uh, it's in the latest issue. You can get it on issa.com. As I mentioned in, in the media section, the digital version, you do talk about pivoting, which is what the industry did. But you also mentioned in the article that the cleaning industry is now the cool kid on the block. We are. You know, it's one of those things that what we're finding and, and you talked about pivoting. So we pivoted our training to all online. Um right now. I mean, we will get back to face-to-face -face and we're going to be expanding um, in 2021 with GBAC Academy, uh, being that we're going to have uh, more training that's available to folks. Uh, that pivoted very early on to our fundamentals course. I think we're now close to 20,000 people worldwide that have taken that course. We then had pivot very quickly to our GBAC STAR program for facilities, and that's our accreditation program. We have over a thousand, a thousand facilities that have completed their accreditation program with over 3,500 that have committed to achieving GBAC STAR. The cool kids on the block is really what people are, are looking for is, you know, think about when you do go out into a facility, you want to be assured and have confidence that the people are taking care of this facility um, to ensure that high touch points are being cleaned, that you, know, um, that you are being protected both as a consumer or an employee. Um, so you wanna see those visual cues. And in the past, maybe we didn't think about it. And we all knew that restrooms were kind of that pivotal area that you would go in and it's like, if it's dirty, you're like, ew. Um, but it really does tell you as a consumer if they're not paying attention to the bathrooms, are they paying attention to those other areas? You want to see people cleaning. You're paying attention to where's the hand sanitizer? Um, are people wearing their mask? If they are wearing their mask, are they wearing it appropriately? We are very much more hygienically cued in. And a lot of the surveys that some of our, um, our uh, members have done are telling us that. Uh, and, and telling us that the general consumer out there is much more aware of proper cleaning technique. They're much more aware of hygiene and they understand, they're starting to understand what a dwell time is. <laughs> um, so, you know, you know, embrace it. We're the cool kids on the block right now. All right. I'll, I'll take that. The cool kids. Um, as a cleaning industry, have we learned our lesson? If you were to rate us one to 10 or zero to 10, whatever, where would you put us as we've responded almost a year after the pandemic or the, um, the virus started to expand? You know, the pandemic wasn't declared till what, March, early March. How would you rate us? Boy, put me on the spot here, Jeff. You know, in general, um, we've responded really remarkably well overall meaning that the industry itself has come together to say, we recognize that to get through this, we need to work together. And so you've got manufacturers, you've got programs that are being developed by some of our manufacturers that are trying to help and assist their customers in being able to show that they're using the products appropriately. 
um, we're, sh we're being able to, and we're going to be rolling out a, a program in first quarter of 2021 on GBAC star, you know, registered programs and where a program actually assists a company or a facility or service provider in becoming accredited. Um, we're finding that, you know, with crisis, um, it really spurs on innovation and companies are, are really stepping up to the plate and coming up with some amazing um, innovative ideas. And we're starting to see more use of some of the technologies that in the past seem to be a little bit harder for people to either obtain or want to obtain electrostatic sprayers, for example. Um, some of the devices that we're seeing uh, you know, pushing the envelope with our regulatory agencies on things like surface protectants, you know, making sure that they meet regulatory requirements, but yet recognizing that there is a need that we have to have these out there and that we need to be more nimble. Um, we still have a long way to go, Jeff, but um, overall, uh, I believe that this industry is going to be so much stronger in the future. Um, and part of it is working together and coming up with these amazing technologies and, and innovations and and um, it's gonna, you know, like, like a lot of what we've experienced in the past with crises, is some things stick and some of these things are gonna stick with us. You bet, and I, I, I would agree with your thoughts there. We've done a fine job. There's more to learn, there's more coming, but uh, we've learned how to respond, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. well, Patty, it's a great article in the latest issue of ISIS Day Today. At the bottom of the screen, folks can see where to get their copy, their digital copy. And I know in the next issue, you and Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner are going to co-author an article on the GBAC Star uh, program, the science behind it, and what it can do for the industry long term. So we okay. look forward to that as well. Well, thank you very much and Happy New Year and um, look forward to working with everybody in right. this, this in upcoming year. We'll get you back on here another time soon. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>